the thing. So let's uh, jump right in to a problem that's actually going to be our first definite integral where we're going to need to integrate by part. So if you have x e to the 5x dx, this is our integral and we're doing a definite integral. So all of the other ones up till this point, we've just had no limits of integration and we've done the integration by parts, we get the answer, boom, we're done. This integral actually has limits of integration so we need to make sure and handle that during the problem. And we also notice that this uh, problem follows a general form. We have an indestructible function, meaning that uh, you, you keep taking derivatives of this term over and over and it really never disappears, totally anyway. And then if you were to, which means it's indestructible, and this guy is destructible because if you keep taking derivatives of this quantity right there, then it just ends up disappearing after a while. So in general, this is a form that we use integration by parts, or at least as a starting point. So we need to define some u. In general, when you see something like this, you want to have u equal to whatever is destructible, and you want to have dv equal to, to everything else. So e to the 5x dx, like this. So we already have two pieces of information required to do integration by parts. We have these two pieces, and now we need to use them to calculate the other two pieces. So for this guy, du with respect to x is just equal to 1, so this means du is equal to dx, okay? That is the other piece of information we need. And then over here, to find v, we just say that v is going to be the integral of e to the 5x dx. All right, now here, if I just had given you this problem, this particular integral, uh, you know, many, many, many sections ago when we first learned how to integrate this, you would do substitution because the exponent is not e to the x, the exponent is e to the 5x. And so you do a substitution, you do all the methods that we learn quickly, and you can figure out what the answer to this integral is. But I think I mentioned to you last time we ran into this, you're going to be integrating these little exponentials with, with uh, you know, e to the 5x, e to the 3x, e to the 2x, or whatever in the exponent, you'll be doing it so much that it's probably worth your time just to memorize what this integral actually is. So that's what I'm going to do from here on out. The integral is e to the 5x is always going to be there because when you integrate an exponential you always get what you originally had back. The only thing you need to remember is in front of it you have to go 1 over the derivative of the exponent. In this case the derivative of 5x is 5 so it's 1 fifth e to the 5x. This is not magic. If you don't understand what I'm doing here, then just go here, do a substitution, and then integrate just like we've always been doing, and the 1 fifth is going to end up coming out, and the e to the 5x is indestructible, so it just kind of hangs around. So that can save you a little bit of paper there. And here we have the four pieces of information that we really need in order to do integration by parts. Right? So integration by parts would be uv minus integral v du. Right? And so what we have is u is x, so we'll have x. v is 1 fifth e to the 5x, so that handles the u times v, minus the integral of v right here, 1 fifth e to the 5x, times du, but we've defined that to be dx. And when we step back and look at what we've done, when we get to the step, we really always should have a simpler integral here than what we started with. And notice that this is actually simple because the 1 fifth can come out and I know how to integrate the remainder here. This other part is just part of the answer. You know, it just kind of comes out from integration by parts. So what we'll do is we'll rewrite this. We'll say 1 fifth times x times e to the 5 x minus 1 fifth e to the 5, whoops, what I need to do here is 1 fifth times the integral of e to the 5x dx. Now don't forget, look back at our original problem statement. Our original problem is a definite integral from 0 to 1. So what this means is that when I do integration by parts, really, this integral goes from 0 up to 1. And so as I carry this work down through, this integration goes from 0 to 1. So you might ask yourself, okay, so I'm going to evaluate this integral once I'm done with it from 0 to 1. What do I do with this stuff here? Well, this is part of the answer. So this gets evaluated from 0 to 1 also. So that's kind of like the point of this problem, is to teach you how to handle definite integrals or integrals with limits, um, with, with definite limits there when you're doing integration by parts. And simply what you do is you just do the integration normally. When you get the uv part that just sits out in the front, you have to evaluate this at the limits of integration that you have in your problem. 
And then when you do minus V du, this integral needs to be evaluated at the same limits. So basically, you're doing your integration by parts and you're evaluating the whole thing uh, from the limits of integration that you have. So not a huge surprise. All right. Now, rather than doing this right now, I want to kind of keep it until we get the entire answer. So what we're going to do is we're going to say this is 1 fifth x e to the 5x from 0 to 1 minus 1 fifth. Now we need to handle this integral. So if you kind of cover this up, how do we handle this integral? Well, this is the e to the 5x integral. It's exactly the same integral we had just a minute ago. So what you have is another 1 fifth comes out because that's the derivative of the exponent. e to the 5x is indestructible, so it, it is the integral of itself. And then you have to evaluate the answer from 0 to 1. So this is really where we stand, right? You have the first part, the uv part, that you have to evaluate. And then you have the second part that comes about that we have to evaluate. So I'm going to tidy this up just a little bit. So it's 1 fifth x e to the 5x evaluated from 0 to 1 minus, this becomes 1 over 25 e to the 5x evaluated 0 to 1. And this is what we need to do. So let's waltz all over, over here and go ahead and handle uh, doing something like this. So just to make sure we're all on the same page, what we have is 1 fifth x e to the 5x evaluated from 0 to 1 minus 1 over 25 e to the 5x from 0 to 1. So we'll switch colors. And let's go ahead and evaluate this guy right here. So let's open up a big bracket like this. So it'll be 1 fifth. And then x is now 1, e to the 5 times 1, right? So that's this guy, minus 1 fifth, 0, e to the 5 times 0. So what I've done here is I've taken this guy, I've evaluated it at 1, minus evaluating it at 0. Of course, I haven't actually done the evaluation yet. And then I have a minus sign here. And I'm going to open another bracket and handle this guy over here. So what I have now is 1 over 25. Put that in parentheses. Maybe that'll help you visualize a little bit. 1 over 25 e to the 1 times 5. Just to make it totally clear, I will have 5 times 1 because I'm evaluating up here. right? And then I have, I'll have a minus, and then I'll have 1 over 25 e to the 5 times 0. And I'll close this off. Make sure you understand what's going on here. This minus sign between the two brackets is coming from this guy right here. So it's like you handle this as evaluating it, minus here, and then this you're evaluating here. Each time you evaluate the limits of integration, you have to subtract the upper limit minus the lower limit. So this is upper limit minus lower limit. This minus comes from here, and then this quantity is upper limit minus lower limit. So it's very, very clear, and I write everything down to make sure we all understand. Okay, so what we have then, just kind of going along here, what we have for this term is 1 fifth times 1 times e to the 5, right? So what we have is 1 fifth times e to the 5, that's what we have there. Right here we have 0, so I'm going to go ahead and put minus 0 just to make sure we're all clear. And what I'll do is I'll just wrap this in brackets and put a minus sign here and open up this new bracket here. What we have here is 1 over 25 e to the 5, and then what we have here is e to the 0 is 1. Don't forget, e to the 0 is 1, so this is 1 over 25. That can trip you up a lot in calculus, you know, when you're doing e to the 0 and such. It looks like this might be 0 at first glance because you kind of have a 0 wrapped up in there. Anything to the 0 power is actually 1. So we have this coming from this, this coming from this. It goes to 0 because of this. We have this coming from this, and we have this coming from this. So let's go ahead and tidy this up a little bit more. We have 1 fifth e to the 5 minus this 1 25 e to the 5, and then this becomes a plus 1 25. So we're getting very, very close to the answer. I'd like to combine these terms together because we both have e to the 5 here, but I do not have common denominators. So this is going to be, I'm going to multiply 5 over 5. So I have 5 over 25 e to the 5 minus 1 over 25 e to the 5 plus 1 over 25, like this. And then finally, the final answer, now that I have a common denominator in both places, 5 minus 1 is 4, so it's 4 over 25 
e to the 5 plus 1 over 25. And I know, I know that looks a little ugly, but that's right. 4 over 25 e to the 5 plus 1 over 25. 